Let's say a little bit more about the word puzzle before we turn to other things. Um, so this is the time to pause it if you forgot to actually work out, say, what n of 2 is yourself. Um, and I'm not going to go through the whole derivation, really, but I'll tell you that this, oh, sorry, just kidding. Uh, Friedman uses when numbers, uh, I feel like letters are kind of maybe more friendly. So he uses the symbols 1 and 2. But if we use the symbols a and b, like I was suggesting, then this I claim is legal. And we can check that. Let's make a tableau. One way to, to write out the simple strings is kind of make a little, um, extract them and kind of put them in a diagonal. So there's a, b. So the, the, the column, the lineup in columns in terms of the positions, a, b, and then 2 through 4 is b, b, b. So notice this goes over 1, and then I add 2 on the end. Um, and then b, b, a, a. And then B, A, A, and there's nothing much to head besides A's. And then there's A, 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 A. And notice this has 11 letters. Um, if I put a 12th in, this is going from position uh, 5 through 10. If I put in a 12th, well, I can't put a B in there because then I'd have an A, B. And I can't have that. Um, and if I put in an A, then that would be something that would have this as a substring. Okay. But there's no matches here. There's I never do an A and a B in any of these. I never do three Bs. Um, after this, I never do two Bs. And after this, I don't do a B. Okay. So this is um, a legal one. And it turns out that this is as long as you can get. And so it turns out that that's... 11. It's not a very big number, so you might wonder why is this, what is this doing in the ridiculously big number video? Okay, well, we'll see eventually. The next thing you could ask is what is n of 3? If you allow yourself three different letters. Okay, so um, let's just think about it. If you tried, um, if you just said, well, let's build on what we had, a, b, 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 a, 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 and don't use it until you need it. Uh, it was four and then seven A's. If you do like a third letter C here, um, then it's not too hard to see that that's not going to work um, because it traps you right at this stage, it traps you pretty early on into not getting anywhere. So that's an interesting one to think about yourself. Um, instead, let's use that third letter right away. And I'm not going to go very far with this because it's just it's just fun to play with. And the, to be honest, the details, if you really want to prove stuff, are very intricate as far as I can tell. Again, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff, but it's just fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take AC, then I'm going to do three Bs. You don't really have to do three Bs, I don't think, but it's, it's not a bad thing to do. Um, and then I, I'm going to kind of emulate what I had before until I have to stop doing multiple As. And that's at, let's say I can do seven A's still, I think, because, let's see, I'm going to write out the tableau focusing on just the substrings. It just e makes it easier for me to see if I just write it out this way. So it's very, it's pretty similar. Here's the simple strings, B, B, A, 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 B, A, I'm going to run out of room here, B, A, um, then it's five A's, yes? Yeah, because I always add two on the end. Okay, so so far it's good. I never do an AC, so I'm fine. I definitely don't do a CBB. Um, and I don't have three Bs. I don't have two Bs after this. And then after this, okay, I don't have a, I don't even have a B. So it can't be a substring of this next one. Okay, so I can do seven A's, which I've got here. Okay, but if I added just more A's, then I'd be in danger of having a substring here. Okay, now... Where I got stuck before was that I also couldn't do a B at the end because I had I had that one starting with an AB and it was just forbidden to, to ever do an AB except maybe it was the last one and it was an odd number of terms. But here I can totally do a B because this one was crucially different. Okay, so having this extra op option at the at the start really makes a difference. Okay, um, and now I can just go back to doing A's if I want. Because um, now I'm going to have uh, a next one. It's not going to line up anymore. You're going to have, what is it going to be? Uh, six, no, seven A's. And then a 
WA. Okay. Um, and that certainly hasn't shown up before. I've, I don't have anything with an a, a bunch of A's and a BA. I can't t strike this off and get any of these guys because these, the, these that, had, that did have B's in them had the B's at the start or had a C at the start. And so that's just not going to happen. And then I can actually add four more A's total. Okay. But if I add any more than that, if I went up to five more A's, then I'm going to be in danger of being able to replicate this guy. So I'll do a B. And then maybe go back to A's. Okay. And so I'm not going to continue that, but you can see that having that one little extra letter at the start did give us a lot more freedom. The fact that I didn't have the A, B right at the start was a big deal um, because that allows me to do some alternation at least between the A and the B choices and not be completely trapped into not being able to do that once I, once I have a string of A's. So, the question is, how big is n of 3? It's clearly bigger than 11, and we, you might get the sense that it's a bit bigger. Um, but, if you play with this, you do get the sense that it's pretty tricky to know when you're going to get into a problem. And in particular, it's fairly tricky to know when you've made a bad early choice. Like I suggested, this is a bad early choice for this one. Um, and so maybe you made a bad early choice and you're getting stuck or it looks like you're going to get stuck and maybe you should go back. That's rather tricky. That's a very tricky situation. Um, so it's not super easy to figure out what those numbers are going to be. Friedman says he polled a lot of uh, people, famous mathematicians, and he got numbers suggestions in the hundreds. Uh, he got one with 20,000, I think he says, from a, a very famous combinatorist. Um, and... Um, somebody who thought, oh, well, this actually gives pretty much wiggle room, so it's probably going to go on for a while, but I don't think it can go on forever. So, the question is, what is this number? And then, like, what is n of 4? What is n of 5? These are growing, right? Less than or equal to, less than or equal to, almost certainly less than. Uh, it does seem like giving more symbols gives you strictly more wiggle room. And how do these numbers grow? We still don't know if any of them are infinite. Maybe if suddenly you really do can go on forever. Okay, maybe n of 3 is, is infinite. We don't know. Okay, I'm going to leave that hanging. Let's be a, be a bit of a cliffhanger, okay? Um, because what I want to do in the next video is I want to show, put this in a context of a much more famous problem. This is really an example of a very general idea called Ramsey theory, and I want to show you the most famous example from Ramsey theory. Talk a little bit about that partly because that's going to lead us to Graham's number, which many people have mentioned in the comments as being a famous example of a big number. And I want to locate that exactly in all the ridiculously big numbers we've done bef before. Uh, so the next video will be about Ramsey theory.